Howdy folks, Jabberiki here. Today I'm going to be fulfilling a patron request of a movie called Phone Booth. Stu Shepard is a cocky publicist who lies his way to power, caring more about looking sharp than being a decent person. He's also been cheating on his wife with an actress he's convinced he'll help make famous. One day, Stu answers a ringing phone booth, only to become a target of a sniper shooter, who wants to teach Stu a lesson and force him to admit his sins to all his loved ones. After some people start demanding to have their turn on the phone, the shooter fires at his first victim, which alerts the attention of the police, who suspect that Stu is carrying a gun. With Stu under the clutches of the shooter's aim, all he can do is comply with his captor and hope that the police can get to the bottom of what's really going on. This film is very much a time capsule for the early 2000s, because the outdated mobile phone technology screams 2004. This isn't a slight on the film though, just an observation that's easy to make from today's perspective. Movies about technology are always at risk of becoming relics of their time, because commercial gadgets, especially phones, rapidly change every single year. However, none of that actually affects the story being told in any way at all. As easy as it is to laugh at how old Stu's cell phone looks, you can tell what it's supposed to be and it has the basic functions needed for the film. The most remarkable thing about this movie to me has to be the fact that most of it takes place around a phone booth. Director Joel Schumacher had the demanding challenge of keeping audiences invested in a thriller that rarely ever switches location. And you know what? I think that he did an excellent job. Heck, I was so immersed in this movie that I kept forgetting that we've been in a phone booth for like an hour. <laughs> Phone Booth utilizes four different cameras to capture every single perspective, whether it's the assassin's aerial view of his targets, the New York Street's atmosphere, or the tightly claustrophobic booth itself. It's a constant feeling of unease because we're limited in space and only get selective views of what's happening. The movie keeps its tension alive by frequently reminding us that Stu can't simply hang up. Not only does he have a sniper pointed at him, but that same dodge could be aimed at an innocent citizen, the police, or one of Stu's loved ones. Stu has been greatly compromised. It's this sense of powerlessness that makes the movie so gripping. He has to obey the voice of this faceless assassin at every whim, while doing his best to prevent further deaths from happening, or making himself look guilty to the police. Come on, Stu. Stop this. I can't take this anymore. What are you doing? Get up. I was looking for my ring, but... Get up, Stuart! I... Stand up and be a man, you're embarrassing yourself! While Stu has been introduced as an unlikable jerk, he's not exactly an evil person. He's an arrogant, cheating man, but he also has a lot of compassion deep down, and feels remorse for the victims of the assassin. You shot me. Why'd you fucking shoot me? You said yes. I sh I said yes, I can hear you. Now yes, kill the motherfucker. You ought to be more careful with what you say. Oh my God. Once put into this vulnerable position, Stu's confidence is stripped away, and we learn how fragile he really is. So, the film isn't just a thriller about a sniper victim trying to avoid danger to himself and others. It's also a character study that develops Stu into this rounded protagonist. A good person at heart who has given in to his temptations. Someone deeply insecure who found comfort in lying. Even the most well-meaning of people can end up going down this wrong road. I wear all this Italian shit because underneath I still feel like the Bronx. I think I need these clothes and this watch. My $2,000 watch is a fake and so am I. I neglected the things I should have valued most. I value this shit. But we also feel for the police captain. He just wants to do what's right and not simply rely on the quickest solution possible. He has no idea about what's happening, but truly wants to decode the situation, because he would regret so much later on if he learned that this was all a misunderstanding. We're not gonna try to force you to come out because then it could be some kind of miscalculation and then I would never find out why this happened. He's got witnesses screaming from the side, peers are yelling at him just to get things done, Stu's concerned wife is insisting she can help somehow, and the assassin is nowhere to be seen. I honestly really admired this guy and felt sorry for his predicament as a captain. Sniper up one of these buildings. So what I want you to do, I want you to talk to SU, I want you to get one of these guys over here. This building. Start looking up here from window to window to window till you find an apartment. Okay? I want you to do it quickly. Let's do it quietly, alright? What about the shoot himself? Well, he's hard to sum up because he's so cryptic. Not only does he keep changing his backstory for giggles, but he also hides a lot under his sleeve for most of the movie. This gives him a creepy, mysterious presence, all amplified by the fact that he's at a great advantage with his sniper, Kiefer Sutherland's voice makes him sound calmly sinister, and no one knows which window he's shooting from. 
The way he looms over this New York street is almost godlike, as if he's some vengeful deity out to smite the wicked. If you want to save yourself, confess. <laughs> I already told Kelly everything. Everything? No. No more excuses and half-truths, Stuart. You look out into those cameras and you bare your soul. TV seems to help bring out the worst in people. You should be fine. We do learn that he's been using this phone booth to target the worst people in New York, but it's hard to see him as a hero when he's willing to risk innocent lives and escalate panic. For someone who hates bad people, he sure has a bloodlust of his own, as well as a disturbing sense of humor. This guy takes a sick pleasure from screwing with Stu's head. I am telling you to answer that phone. Excuse me! Excuse hey, me! You can't cross in front of um, here. Answer it! Look, I can't. Please. Don't make me hurt you. Talk to your wife. It's not her calling. How can you be so sure? It's you. It's you, you miserable fuck. <laughs> Damn, you got me. You continue to impress. He may be trying to punish unlikable people, but there's nothing merciful or noble about his approach. By the movie's end, Stu comes out as a better and more honest person, with a more open relationship with his wife. But at what cost? Someone was murdered, lives were threatened, and Stu will certainly need years of therapy. What makes this all the more haunting is that we not only meet the killer at the end, but he also gets away with his crimes, leaving a more confident but severely traumatized Stu completely in shock. We're left with these complicated mixed feelings that raise questions about ethics and existentialism. That's the sign of a good movie, a film that can inspire debate and thought straight after. To conclude, Phone Booth is a nail-biting thriller that uses its one location to tell the journey of a deeply flawed man who is forced to confess his sins as a sniper shooter plays God with him, all while deep diving into themes of communication technology, vigilante ethics, and the morality of honesty. It's a very exciting movie that I really recommend to others. So those are my thoughts on Phone Booth. What do you think of this movie? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to click that like button. If you'd like to learn more about how you can get a Patreon review request yourself, then head over to my Patreon now. Cheerio, folks.